Now, I will tell you what I am really, really excited about. Um, so, in the iPhone app store, there are lots and lots of apps that do really well, and you hear about Angry Birds, which has sold you know millions and millions and millions of dollars. There are also less well-known applications, and I just want to point you to one of them. Uh, and this is the sort of ecosystem that I hope develops in the Windows Phone marketplace, and I think is entirely possible. So here are some folks who have written an application, and if you're like me, you may have an iPhone, but you have probably not heard about this application, iTeleport. It has 25 bucks, but by all accounts, is a good application. It's a VNC client application. And they have not ever been in the top 100 sold in the App Store. It's just never been there. But they have this quiet success story that I just love. They sell on a daily basis. We go down to the graph, daily revenue. They sell, if you can tell over here, that's $1,500 a day. It's two, uh, it started out as two guys, just a couple of smart people putting together a good application, and they make, you know, uh, $1,500 to $2,000 a day, right? And it never drops below $1,000 a day, right? That's not rich like we were promised in the dot-com boom days where secretaries were making millions of dollars and that sort of thing, right? But I'll take that sort of an ecosystem, right? I teleport. I just love that story. All right, but we are here today to talk about... Windows Phone. Have you guys seen this ad yet? Everybody seen it? of advertising spending for Microsoft. If you've been a part of other development efforts, like maybe Silverlight, and you thought, wow, this is a big deal. It's not a big deal like this is going to be a big deal. They're really, really charging. Right? So we had the announcement this week of the phones. There's like eight phones, I think, that, are, they, that they announced. Some from HTC that look really, really nice, kind of like an iPhone sort of form factor. We have... Um, uh, other ones from Samsung and LG and um, Dell. This Dell Lightning thing <coughs> looked really, really nice. Has now been renamed to the Venue. How do you rename something from the Lightning to the Venue? <laughs> but they did it. It's the same phone though. Um, so, so we are right, right, right on the front end of this thing, and it's a very, very exciting time. Which brings us to uh, the first session. Any questions about this stuff? Great. So we're gonna we're gonna start to dig into this a little bit. Uh, the getting started part. The architecture, what the hardware looks like, we're going to take a look at the phone, what the marketplace looks like, what development looks like, and what, what the API looks like. All right, um, so Ben is new to the Windows Phone team. Ben, have they told you um, who this phone is for yet? Has the team told you that? There's, there, it's, there's a hint, it's, it's these people over here. Life matching Life matching No, 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 it's, it's for cool people. Not like Windows Mobile 6, right? Oh. Cool people here. 
You guys don't believe me? You don't believe me? No. So, I actually have proof. If you um, step back to like 2000, um, 2002, you guys know Dr. Sheldon Cooper? He's kind of famous. Yeah? So, uh, volume, somebody's saying? <laughs> I'll give you a volume. And? So, uh, Dr. Sheldon Cooper's going to check his email. According to the roommate agreement, I'm entitled to allocate 50% of the cubic footage of the common areas. But you didn't notify me by email, so this is still a breach. <laughs> I did notify you. Oh, you did, did you? <laughs> Sorry, you wasted your money on an iPod when Microsoft comes out with theirs. <laughs> okay. But the phone's going to be nothing like the Zoom. It's going to be way better. Okay. Um, so the, 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 the phone is actually really beautiful, and it uses a lot of typography. The UI on it is called Metro, and, and the inspiration was just signage, right? Signs tell you where you need to go. It's very simple. It's just what you need to see. It's not candy coating. It's not, you know, um, you know, tiny little icons, etc. So let's power up the Windows Phone, and let's take our first, first look at the Windows Phone. All right. As you can tell, they're doing um, a lot of new things. Oh, wait. <laughs> now, you, now, you did notice you slide it across here, right? And now, if we actually have the right Windows Phone here, you actually, um, to, to get this one to turn on, slide up. Upward motion. So, these, this phone is actually really nice. The whole, like, I'm not sure the, the, the mark, uh, marketing message is really going to hold up. <laughs> I'm not sure it's really accurate at this point, but the idea is you can look at your phone and you can get a real, real easy sense of what's going on here. So, the uh, number of messages. Uh, well, there's one. I don't have to look at a, you know, a tiny little icon and a tiny little red dot above it. And, these tiles, we're going to talk about how your third-party apps can use these tiles to sort of um, surface information in a, in a really interesting and, and, and useful ways. So you're going to notice this phone doesn't look anything at all like an iPhone, which is great, right? Because BlackBerry, all these other phones, they're trying to be the new iPhone. And I think that's a catch-up game. And Microsoft has, I think, some real potential here to, to do something really new and innovative. Again, so this is how you would make a call. Notice the typography. You know, here's the number pad, just the numbers, not a lot of extra, right? Uh, now, you may notice I'm hitting the back button. We've got a couple of buttons. We'll talk about what they do later, but essentially this, this back button lets me go backwards. If you're used to the iPhone, it's like that back icon, right? I mean, there's some good and there's some bad about it, but I tell you what, it's really nice to be able to hit that back button wherever you are, in an app, in, in a third-party app, in an um, uh, IE or wherever, and it's going to do appropriate action. And you're going to notice these dancing little tiles up here on the people tab, or on the people hub, excuse me, they call these hubs. Oh, and this one's been wiped. So there's like two phones for us to, to play with, and they get shared among about like 15,000 people, so... <laughs> 
it's, it's an ugly situation for right now. Phone availability, they have said, is going to be November. You can actually walk into the store and you can start buying these. So it's going to get a little easier to get a hold of these. Stephanie was. Uh, oh! Yeah, there's enough to. You, you have one, which makes sense. So if you can. Just, just for this presentation. So we're, we're going to see who Stephanie has in her contacts. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. <laughs> no, 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 I know this. I know this. Oh, she's going to get up here before I erase it. Do they erase? Do they do that if you do the wrong password? Yes. All right. Wow. Okay, so she's rearranged hers. Um, and this is great because this is the first time I'm actually seeing a, a, a phone that's been in use. So check out the People Hub. So you notice people's faces are flashing up there, which is kind of nice. Um, we can um, flip through the contacts. And by the way, this is bringing in contacts. Um, and I don't know about this particular situation, but it can bring them in from Hotmail. It can bring them in from Outlook. It can bring them in from Facebook. Right? It can pull in these disparate sources and display them in one list, right? Which is which is probably a lot different than um, uh, some of the phones we're using now. It's pretty cool. We could find like Scott Goo, call him up. Um, so that is the People Hub. We also have. Um, can we can we flip through your pictures? Oh, okay, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> So um, you're going to notice that that picture's top.